This is the first story of Jesus acting on his authority as the anointed Son of God and as the one whom John the Baptist announced as the Messiah. If you think about the stories of the Messiahs, Saul and David, the first thing that they do after they get anointed is to rally the men of Israel and to go into battle and defeat the enemies of Israel. Jesus is also anointed at his baptism, and he rallies the men of Israel, in this case the four fishermen, and he goes into battle. But it is not against the Philistines, it's against the unclean spirits. It's against the spirits of the powers of evil. And the way in which he defeats them is not by warfare, but it is rather by his calm authority and his power over the spirits of evil. So this is a story that immediately reframes the nature of Jesus' authority and power and what it means that he is the Messiah. The exorcism raises the question as to whether this man was crazy, whether he was mentally ill, or whether he was you know, just disorderly, or whether he was you know, possessed by a demon. Clearly, in the story, it is presented as an exorcism, as the casting out of a demon. So the unclean spirit convulsing him, crying out with a loud voice. You know, uh, So an unclean spirit was understood then to be a demonic spirit. But what we would understand to be an unclean spirit is someone whose spirit was deformed, who was perhaps we would call mentally ill, but more likely one who is malevolent, one who is hostile, one whose spirit is a spirit of evil, of uh, rejoicing and doing wrong. So what Jesus does then is to establish his authority over the powers of evil, in this case, uh, in the unclean spirit. Now, in telling this story, there are three characters who have to be presented. The first is the man with the unclean spirit, who you know is in the synagogue and then sees Jesus and, and cries out. The second is Jesus. Now, it is identified clearly in the story that the man cried out. So it's important to cry out, to make it really loud. Jesus' rebuke does not have to be loud, but rather confident and calm, but with authority. And the last character who's presented are the people in the synagogue. And you know they can be even more enthusiastic than I told it if you want. So, you know, they are simply both delighted and amazed at what Jesus has done. And, and so it can have the spirit of, you know, things going around. Through the synagogue. What's that? What's this? Oh, man, this is like a teaching. New authority and so on. So it has that feel about it. This is a joyful story. It's a story of a great victory. And notice that what the people do at the end of the story, what they are saying is essentially a summary of the story itself. So first of all, that Jesus is teaching. They're astonished at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority. And then he commands the unclean spirits and they obey him. It's a summary of what has gone before. Now about the kingdom of God. When Jesus teaches, he's probably teaching about the kingdom of God. And the reference here is back to the summary of Jesus' proclamation when he came into Galilee. You know, the kingdom of God is, is near at hand. Repent, believe in the good news. The time is fulfilled. So the teaching that they are referring to has content 
from the earlier things that Jesus has said. This is then a story to be told with great enthusiasm and, and joy, you know, celebrating this, uh, this great victory. So it's a victory story.